We're here in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous de Septembre. For AMBES TV, I'm Richard Banks. And I'm joined now by Julian Anoisi, who's Global Head of Public Sector Practice at Guy Carpenter. Julian, welcome. Hi, Richard. Nice to be here. So it's clear that the last two or three years have dramatically changed people's perception of risk. How's that been reflected in the global insurance and reinsurance industry? Well, uh, I'm sure everybody's talking about that, but you know, essentially, I think what's happened is you've you've got a an industry that is now grappling, and in fact, a client base that is now grappling with a whole different set of of risks. The word systemic risk is used a lot more often than it than it was. Uh, difficult to insure risk, uninsurable risk, uh, all frankly used to, in, to to describe a situation which we're now faced with, where the sorts of risks and, and perils and events that we're dealing with are ones that perhaps we just didn't think about five years ago. Um, but now, you know, even before when we were talking about cyber, we were expecting it to happen, along comes a pandemic, and you've now got massive government intervention on a scale that you've not seen before, uh, and an industry that's really struggling to, to know what role it should be playing. So in, in terms of that and the role of the insurance industry, how geared up is it to address the risks that are uh, developing and emerging? I think it's it's gearing rather than geared, <laughs> if I can be, uh, you know, uh, honest. And I think that's partly why, um, you know, I sort of come to Guy Carpenter to sort of almost lead that charge for for, for Guy Carpenter. Um, you know, in in many respects, what you're really talking about is, you know, again, using those terms that we've all heard, black swan, you know, one in hundreds, whatever you want to call it. Um, these are things that we all talked about, um, but didn't happen on a on a, on a regular uh, scale. And we all remember, you know, nine eleven and what that did to the industry. And now you're faced with almost that sort of an event, almost on an annual basis. Um, and so uh, we're not used to dealing with them. They're perils that are different. Um, we talked about cyber, but you could sort of replace that with you know pretty much anything you want, whether it's climate change, aging population, changing demographics, supply chain interruption, health wealth gap, and I could go on. Um, and what part are we going to play? How are we going to lean in and provide solutions uh, to customers, all of whom are dealing with those exact issues? So one of the things that you've, you've touched on there is the government involvement and the government partnership that, they've, uh, that there's been. How is that here to stay? And, and what role does the insurance industry and what role does Guy Carpenter have in that? Well, I think it, I think it varies depending on country and political hue, if I can put it that way. Um, but you know, you, you, say, you say government intervention. I mean, yes, government has intervened in uh, society, the economy. Uh, in terms of its intervention in the insurance industry, it's still finding its way. Um, and part of the reason for that is that we have to, uh, as an industry, um, yeah, the word partnership implies a two-way street. Um, and as an industry, we can't simply say, okay, give me an unlimited guarantee and I'll do what you want. We're going to have to be a little bit more innovative in the solutions that we find um, so that we're sort of saying, okay, there is um, an end-to-end -end solution here where we can actually provide all the other things that we do as an industry, but which perhaps historically we haven't been very good at articulating that value proposition. So, you know, and I look at my own company, MMC, if you think about Marshall McLennan companies, it's, it can offer an end-to-end -end solution that starts with strategic advisory and consulting, that moves into knowledge and understanding and investment in understanding risks and perils, that goes into risk mitigation and how you actually can reduce the impact of these things when they happen. Then there's the transaction and, and all of the things that go with the transaction, whether it's parametric, standard reinsurance, insurance-linked securities, and then, of course, post-disaster recovery to get those economies and societies back up on their feet uh, quicker. So those are all the things we can do as an industry, but it's putting them together in that end-to-end -end solution, which is really what we're trying to do, at, uh, as I say, at Marshall McLennan Companies. So the economic situation uh, is high on the agenda here in, in Monte Carlo. Um, straightened economic times, how does people's attitude to insurance change in those conditions? Yeah, I think, I think part of the problem is, is that you've got uh, a solution that we can design, we can spend the money in the research and all of the mitigation that goes along with that, but ultimately somebody has to buy the product. 
otherwise. Uh, and, and you see that everywhere in the world, um, you know, whether it's in Californian earthquake or Italian earthquake or uh, even terrorism insurance in the UK, which I'm obviously quite familiar with, the take up rate tends to be smaller because what tends to happen is people will say, well, actually, if the worst happens, the government is there to bail me out. And so what we have to do is to, and what the government has to do, because it's a partnership, is to provide the right set of circumstances um, so that people are encouraged to protect themselves and to take care of themselves. And that's partly the design of the product and making sure it responds to the particular situations that people are worried about. It's partly the pricing of the product, and that comes with better understanding and, and modeling and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, part of it is the individual's willingness to have a whole of society approach to resilience, which means, well, actually, I'll buy the insurance I'll take the advice that they're giving me to actually protect myself. And in return for that, I expect a slightly lower premium. Um, and then you've got a situation where you've got a true public-private partnership where everybody's paying their part. And as I say, you have a whole of society uh, approach to resilience and to a solution uh, that should leave you in a much better place should the worst happen. You talk about problem solving there. One of the, the criticisms that's often leveled at the insurance industry is very good at solving the last problem. Um, how does it get on the, the front foot? What, what about looking at the future problems that it might encounter? Yeah, look, I think I think that's a really interesting point. If you look at every single government intervention or public-private partnership around the world, they are all post-event interventions. Um, now, that's not only the insurance industry's fault, because of course. You know, you could argue, well, why don't you fix the roof while the sun is shining? And we're in an exact situation. We've been talking about public-private partnership in cyber, for example, for at least five years. Uh, we still have nothing in place. If something were to happen tomorrow, there'd be a lot of finger pointing because we would say, well, you know, we offered you a solution. You didn't choose to take it. They would say, well, typical insurance industry doesn't respond uh, when it needs to. So... You're absolutely right, and part of that is is modeling and data analytics and, and, and having that uh, data to be able to provide a solution. But in some respects, I think we're probably in a situation now where we're going to have to invest in understanding those risks and put a toe in the water and design solutions that allow us to put a toe in the water without uh, jeopardizing our balance sheets, um, as opposed to simply waiting for it to happen and then either excluding it or coming up with a, a less than perfect solution. Julian, thank you very much indeed for your time today. You're welcome. Good to be here. For AMBEST TV, I'm Richard Banks.